Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from me, host Imperial Dane, featuring a one versus one here on Moscow outskirts. It's the Sunday smoking challenge for smoking Sunday challenge. Out of the way, something Sunday, something smoking. I've got a bunch of replays, and I end up choosing this one because it rather demonstrate the most consistent use of smoke usage and turning also good one. Also, now perhaps you know. Overall, extremely awesome gameplay. They also showed some good and consistent play there as well. Some of the others might be more suited for Monday novices. But nonetheless, I would very much like to thank everyone who did send me in a replay or several, in fact, for the Smoking Sunday challenge. That is definitely great, lovely to see that people can get engaged and you know try. So I hope certainly people will try again when I come up with the next challenge. Though what that will be, I don't know yet. We shall. Be watching here, though, in the north, insanity. Fighting for the Soviet Union, taking on the mantle of the 192nd in Rifle Division. Opposing him shall be Yanni Vastekis of the 14th Panzer Division. And we are seeing already here two kind of start going on there from Yanni. Pioneers moving up the left hand side. And of course, this support weapon company start likely means there's going to be an awful lot of Maxims. Here from insanity, because sanity is for the weak. <coughs> the wrong game. Anyways, then he needs and one moving more centre words while the conscripts will be leading the advance up the right hand flank. So both players going for their closest fuel point, which in this case in the south is this one. North, this is this fuel point. Easy to secure, easy to protect. Whereas it's the other way around, there's definitely always a cutoff point that can be used to frustrate any attempt at that. So that is, of course, vital to remember. And we are already here seeing a mortar coming out for Yanni. While the conscripts continue north there, of course, we're still waiting something else from Insanity. Whose sanity has bereft him. And there we go, the Maxim crew arrives for the 192nd. Rifle Division. Rolling it out. Yes. And he's moving up already here. Going to cut off this point in case he does try to move for this fuel. Of course, he won't be getting anything out of these resources right away. Just like this point rather dominates any access to the right hand side for the south. And there we go, an MD42 arriving now for Yanni. Victory point secured, munition secured. Maxim moving out. Comment unit securing there. Conscripts moving out of there. Of course, this sort of start will delay Insanity's ability to seize them out. Of course, on the other hand, he hopes to sort of quickly push forwards with the Maxim machine gun squads. And there we go, Grenadiers spot it all. Mortar setting up soon, I imagine. Maxim opens up on the Grenadiers, going to catch them out in the open. And immediately looks like we're going to see some sort of mortar ability usage here from a Yanni. Whatever could it be? here on the Smoking Sunday challenge. Yes indeed ladies and gentlemen, he's popping down to smoke to protect his Grenadier squad. I'm showing that the Maxim squad can't actually see, although it seems to be fine still a bit. But there we go. Line of sight utterly obfuscated. You cannot see, allowing the Grenadiers to quickly get unpinned, unsuppressed and get moving again. Forcing also the Maxim track to relocate since it rather realises it's Chance of surprising the opponent has been ruined. And already looks like he might be popping another round of smoke. Sending up for an assault, or no, he's apparently expecting his DM Maxim to still remain there. Mac MG upgraded on the Grenadiers. Of course, he knows he doesn't have to save up for Panzerfaust, so he knows he can also upgrade his Grenadiers with light machine guns. And there go the Grenadiers advancing into the smoke, taking the chance here to flank about. He also knows where the Maxim is at the moment. Another engagement up north. And of course the Grenadiers could continue versus the conscripts. Not good here though, he's probably not paying attention, but they do have cover, his Grenadiers do not. MD opening up there on the Maxim. Grenadiers going to flank with their own light machine gun. The MD for as well there, mortar firing away. And there we go, the Maxim is pinned. And getting fired on from several angles. The Pioneers are not looking too well at getting suppressed. Mortar rounds falling down, killing additional Maxim members. The Grenadiers here might want to consider. No, they're sort of holding it all right for the time being. A second mortar arriving, a second Granatenwerfer. Going to support the German offensive. And there we go, the Maxim was pushed back. Again, the usage of smoke allowed him to not having to pull it back and keep it still in the front line. And then, of course, quickly move on. 
and even again use the smoke to then cover the approach of the gun and just flank the maxims so overall again already there early on so use the smoke to sort of model up the use of the maxim machine gun lovely that lovely the gun ideas now are now being pushed away too large a soviet infantry presence Yanni conducting a small slight retreat here, or at least pulling back, but he will ultimately need to get his grenadiers out there. They're too low on health. And there we go, taking up, but there we go, down to two men. Fritz and Hansi just bit the dirt. And we are seeing the light to mechanized company going up, but two mortars is definitely going to be a bit of a presence here for Yanni. Going to bombard his opponent, of course, also provide a lot of smoke if necessary. Two Maxims so far. Additional conscript scores are rhyming to support the Maxims, I would imagine. Rolling that tiny little machine gun up. And there we go, we do Enemy see that the like to make a nice company up. We're also seeing him getting a scout car up, interestingly enough. Securing the points there and there. But all quiet for now. Gonna is going to seem force. He could also consider getting those light machine gun. And there we go, Max are moving up. And quickly setting up to try and catch the Grenadiers. Oh, they are fast enough to get beyond the range, it looks like. So that was a bit close. So we advance on the western flank. Note here that Insanity is not just bunching up to attack from one angle. He's attacking from several angles at once. He's trying to push around. He's trying to, of course, overextend Yanni. So, of course, also certainly not poor ideas there from Insanity either. And of course pushing forwards with his Maxims as well, trying to be aggressive. And of course with the Maxim currently you can be very aggressive, which of course is a bit of a problem. Although here suffering a bit, and of course the Mortars can rather cause some problems for the Maxims. But no, we actually pulled back at least one of the Mortars, apparently not feeling quite... In fact, both Mortars have been pulled back. Both were spotted. In this case, Gianni made a mistake, he shouldn't have had that once. That aggressively fought, he should have been behind his other unit. Scout car here supported by Flamethrower Pioneers. Rather interesting combination, of course, the Pioneers can then quickly repair the Scout car. So not necessarily a rubbish one. The Pioneers moving up to burn out the Bolsheviks. And apparently Insanity seems to have gotten about his forces over there, which could have moved in and tried to flank here. Bit of a shame, bit of a shame. We do see that the conscripts are ultimately pushed away. A small victory for the Reich there. And a Panzer going to squat on the way for Yanni. And these conscripts are definitely not going to win that engagement. Their condition simply being too poor and already here insanity is moving on. Having felt he's gotten what he needs out of this tier, he's moving on to the next one, although quickly getting a field gun. There we go. Tank of Eva Tank coming up. And there we go. Grenadiers coming under fire from Maxim. Mortis moving up again. Grenadiers as well. Scout car comedy near fighting here versus the Grenadiers. Field gun light going to try and move in and knock it out. Of course, the Pioneers are ready to support as well. And there we go. The conscripts are suffering. And there we go. Flanking. And not like letting down smoke in front of the Maxim to support his and protect his troops. So well done there by the other mortar keeps them barning away. I would not necessarily say you should get two mortars if you want to do this, but of course it doesn't hurt. And of course it allows Yanni to lay down an awful lot of light artillery at the same spot, of course. And that's always something, but still good and again consistent usage. Whenever there's a maxim that might be a problem, he pops down smoke. Although he needs to move this field gun. Apparently Yanni's not quite paying attention. Ah, uh, fine. Dodges the first. Can it get away in time? Apparently he manages while the pioneers try to burn out the field gun. Crew. And we're actually noting here that Yanni has a bit of a slight weakness, or a considerable flaw if you want to consider that as well. He's got absolutely no anti-tank. No panther hex, no pack. Which is a bit of a problem at the moment, I would say. And he certainly needs to rectify that one quickly. Of course, you could also try and rush for tanks. Either way, he needs to do something. Schnell. Veterans run there for the scout car. Though needs not stop in front of the Maxim. Panzer is though going to flank. That's good. Comet is near trying to deal with the field gun here, but coming on intense fire from the Soviets. Three squads of conscripts now to augment the two Maxims. And there we go. 
Maxim on the run. So are the pioneers. As a large unruly mob of Soviet soldiers fired down their way. Now of course Insanity needs to be careful because now he's in fact doing what he previously did not do and that's blobbing up and just making himself a very easy target for example to say two mortars firing away as if though it was Christmas morning and the only way to get the packages would be to fire the mortar rounds at Santa. So of course at the same time while he's strength at the same time you might also want to you know, attack the same point from several angles to gain also some strength and of course again when he knows there are mortars around this really becomes a curious choice because again he's going to be an easy target for those mortar rounds. I mean he's going to make it more likely that the mortars actually hit something which is usually what you don't want to happen. He's actually popping smoke but he's not attacking that's I suppose you could also just want to obfuscate him, confuse him a bit, make him think there's an attack coming again. I mean, if you drop, pop smoke consistently while attacking, eventually your opponent, of course, will assume every time you pop smoke that you're attacking, of course, just move. There we go, Maxim of oh, MDM in supporting up, Maxim opening up the gun of this gun of the ears. Getting beyond the range of the Maxim, though. Minor fighting over here, Panzer's getting overwhelmed by conscripts, the scout guys nowhere to be seen, it is damaged. Gun of the ears forced away. Are the mortar also firing away? More smoke. Top to get the maximum again. Pentagons need to get into cover. Come on, Yanni. Popping over to Insanity. Who has chosen a doctor? He's chosen Guards Motor. Field gun number two on the way. Four conscript squads. T 34 on the way. MD 48 getting bombarded. Maxim getting bombarded. Pentagons forced away and they were cut down. That was definitely not so well done there by Yanni. So we might see the Maxim go down. And indeed it is down. Lost to the Maxim. I mean the MG42, damn it. At the same time the Maxim and Conscript Squad wipe out the Grenadier Squad up. Oh dear. Yanni now has too much to manage. He's actually again. Now we do see Insanity has rather more Manchester troops better. Forming up several combat groups pushing at different angles. And there's simply no way that Yanni can actually hold this. So that was actually more sensibly done. And now there's T-34 heading in and we also note still no anti-tank. Looks like he lost the combat engineer, so suffering some losses. Some losses. But there is nothing to stop the advance of the T-34. We also note the scout cars in fact now are smoldering wreck on the side of the road. Our territory is falling into enemy hands. So they are definitely some serious problems here. Oh dear, field gun opening up on the Morton. Here's the thing to note. Smoke does nothing about artillery abilities and such. So the mortar crew died except for Heinrich who made a very heroic run for it. More smoke going down like to cover the retreat of the machine gun. Definitely a bit unfortunate. Replacement squad of Pentagon it is here for the 14th. 192nd rifle division continues onwards, pressuring the fascists on every angle. This field gun can also stand to much support. So far again, and of course that's a slight problem with Gianni's strategy or Oh, flamethrower tank burst into flamethrower needs to get out of there, but the problem was basically that what Yanni tried to do was hold too much territory, which basically tried to hold the entire map with forces he clearly couldn't do it with. I mean, he'd need a lot more infantry and have them upgraded more considerably to succeed, because that was not quite as well thought as it could have been. But Panzerkampfangfe has arrived on the field. Moving in, and the Deers need to get out of there. Field gun opening up in the rear of the Panzer IV. Panzer fast, they're well done, but the Grenadiers now need to get out of there. Wixook! Come on, there we go. And there we go, T-34 is wrecked. Troops need reinforcing, Panzer is engaging conscripts, though he's equipped them with Panzer tracks, of course they're not going to be very useful against infantry now, so that was not really well thought out there by Yanni either. Panzer 4 rushing straight into all of these conscripts, he needs to be careful in case, you know, that Mr. 
concerns. He has researched under tank grenades, but he hasn't. In fact, he's researched nothing at all for his infantry, and he's actually getting more field guns now. More smoke. Might just be to mess with his opponent's head, I don't know. Panzer gun is though having some luck still though. Apparently one Panzerschreck completely blew up some poor Soviet peasant. Panzer are going to need repairs. Your command? MG42 still holding out in this very, very small wooden shack. And the conscripts caught right in front of it are getting punished most severely. Taking fucking fire! Maxim quickly responding to the approach of the Panzer Grenadiers. And quickly getting them to drop their heads. The and running them off. Well done. Hey, T gun here. So a bit of quiet all of a sudden. In Sanders, he has suffered some losses. He's definitely worried about an armored threat, obviously, as you can see with all those field guns. But of course, at the same time, with the smoke usage, of course, there's a chance here for Yanni to actually largely negate them to at least allow him to more easily flank them. So, of course, the question is, will Yanni take up that chance? Or will he be doing something else? Still, in Sanders, in fact, holding a nice chunk of the map. In fact, time for the mid-game analysis. In Sanders, he has again with his, you know, Attacking Yanni so a stretch front, actually succeeding in pushing him back, gaining a nice chunk over the map. Of course, he could gain even more. His prop has slightly been, you know, sometimes he's been losing units a bit sensibly, but the same can be said about Yanni. You know, sometimes units are simply exposed, and again, for Yanni, his entire front is so a stretch, so his units are much more isolated, and that's again easier for insanity to find out and wipe out. What Insanity, of course, wants to do is keep up the pressure. He wants to sort of keep the field guns within range of each other so they can support each other. And of course, he wants to launch a more sizable blow if he can secure the center. And that way, keep, have the field guns point towards different angles. He could, you know, do considerable harm to Yanni's cause. And of course, Yanni doesn't want that to happen. At the same time, Yanni wants to gain ground. Again, he wants to do some damage, building up a small panzer force, supporting them with smoke. He could would want to get those field guns out there. Once that's happened, he's definitely going to have a much better chance of basically winning this match. He also needs some more infantry. He's down to basically two squads of infantry and only one of them is really going to help against other infantry and that's a gentleman with the light to machine and give So that also needs to be rectified, at least to me. Also, I don't think that Insanity needs more conscripts. Well, I think he needs some armor to support his infantry again, attack on the angles. Help a bit with the Panzers, perhaps Ram 1 if it gets a bit too clever for its own good. And of course you could also try saving up for this. I've come, he's close to having the command points, a few T-34-85s could definitely also prove to be a threat if utilised properly. But let us return to the fight. Maxim might want to get a bit closer to actually take the point instead of hiding behind that tractor. And there you got a second Panzerkampfwagenfeuer arriving, forming a small armoured core of which Yanni can focus his forces around. <coughs> Quickly crewing a mortar. Then once more adding a nice little amount of punch to his force. And of course, something to provide cover in case anything goes slightly awry. But he needs to also get some victory points. He's got none. His opponent has two. That's generally not a good thing either. But there we go. And again, we note here that Incentive seems to favor a western approach moving up this area, which he feels is safe. And again, we also see he rather loves a lot of conscripts, a lot of field guns. Insanity is. Not always one for clever plans. Maxim moving up here, getting assaulted by the Panzers, getting out maneuvered. We also a mortar nearby. That, you know, on the other hand, is a bit more dangerous. Kind of just doing what they can here, but getting a bit overwhelmed. We actually noting three mortars for Yanni. I think that, on the other hand, might be overdoing it. Just maybe. And tons of smoke, though in this case, of course, 
I'm not sure if he's trying to cover his own retreat, but in this case he actually seems to be, you know, helping his opponent advance. On the other hand, of course, also means his field guns have to get closer if they want to support. So, of course, that could also be another possibility. And, of course, at the same time, they are being forced right within range of his own weapons. Including the Panthers, all the Panthers, he needs to be careful. Field guns finding a way, other Panthers. Ah. Come on, Yanni. And there we go, he's even got smoke on his tanks, well done. Enemy forces capturing supply sector. Enemy and, oh, aircraft called in from the Germans. What sort of aircraft could it be? Looks like a recon one to get an idea what opponents are doing. more smoke and popping smoke on the field guns forcing them again either to pull back or move closer which means the tank can actually help maneuvering him that's what's happening he's actually moving his field guns closer apparently insanity is having a small moment of insanity he's not quite sure what to do there's too much smoke and now his field guns are within range they're out maneuver they can only be bombarded as well this is a massacre and almost a trap if I didn't know better hell I might not be knowing better but it certainly looks like a trap. Though, of course, it could have been coincidence. Either way, his field guns got captured right then and completely wiped out. And that's all thanks to smoke because, again, he must have ordered them to follow the pants and then he just followed them straight into the smoke. Good lord. And more smoke. Well, this is definitely a smoking Sunday, that's for Your sure. Try not to we inhale, though. And now we're seeing a mortar half tank. He's got four mortars! Got him, Himmel! Which, of course, means he's gone for the spearhead doctrine, but still four mortars? I think Yanni might be slightly yeah. overdoing it, though, of course, with mortars, you might actually want at least, you know, two to sort of get some volume, but still, that's quite a lot. Of course, on the other hand, he's definitely not going to be lacking in light artillery. But that rather did a lot of damage there to Insanity. Though again, it also had something to do with the fact he just blobbed up, which again also made it a lot easier for Yanni to neutralize his entire force with a few smoke rounds. So of course, this vital to remember, and looks like this field gun is going to get hit with more rounds. Although so far they don't quite seem to have any luck in actually hitting. Mortar team awaiting orders. Still no real luck. Mortar carrier waiting for orders. Using the mortar half tank to fight smoke first gun deers as they advance. Again, consistent use of smoke. And looks like the mortars are getting field gunned. One crew already down. Pentagon is advancing here with a mortar nearby in support. And now we do see again Insanity seems to have lost a bit of the finesse, now it's just blob up, blob up, blob up. Oh good lord, if he gets a fragmented bomb running in there, I mean that's going to be terrible. Awful even, it's going to be a massacre. And there you go, T two T-3485s, upgraded T-34s, bigger turret, more armoured turret, and of course a bigger gun. The hull itself actually never was actually up armoured, meaning the hull was still quite a problem in terms of vulnerability. Here we go, T-34-85 advances. And the is smart one to consider getting out of there. Alright, apparently they can't hit, but there we go. We do see that he finally realises it might be time to get out of there. And there we go, huge conscripts horde advancing up there. Mortar! Oh, hold fire, he thought he could hide it, but apparently someone didn't hide himself properly enough. Panther Force ready. And there we go. Perhaps realizing what's going on, he's quickly going to flank with the T-34s. Mortar though is in trouble. Again, a bit of a shame there. And there we go. In theory, he could call, try and call in a bombing run right here. That would be, again, terrible. If not downright devastating. Pack though getting flanked here by the two T-34s. Veterans one on one. 
And there we go, popping smoke. Popping smoke, mark target going in. One, T-34 is down. Panzer effects arriving as well. Pack firing in too. This is not looking good. The field gun was actually not supporting this at all. Which was definitely a shame, although we did see one Panzer four going down, a smoldering wreck. Ultimately though, rather worked out in his favour around his opponents. T-34 though needs to get away. And in sense he might want to use this horde of conscripts for something. Another squad of Panzer going with Panzer Shrek as well. Seems quite fond of those. He's also floating a ton of munitions. And some poor bagger on the run. And again, Insanity rather seems to have lost it. Insanity really truly having set in now, just moving in one horde, afraid of his opponent. And ironically enough, thinking their safety numbers and apparently in proximity, setting himself up for a nice from action bombing run if Mr. Yanni rather decides on it. I mean, oh yes. Quick move with the Stuka. Oh! Good lord, that was a massacre. Three squads of conscripts gone in the blink of an eye. And apparently poor Fedorov is still alive and left behind by his comrades. Oh, that was just a massacre. Nothing less. But one which Insanity is not very much culpable in because, well, he was the one blobbing up. So yeah, that was a bit of a shame. Bit of a shame. Quite a waste of conscripts as well. I mean, really. So that was definitely a huge fumble there. Fresh conscripts arriving, but things are not looking good. I mean, he's lost three field guns now, several T-34s, and again, just three squads in the blink of an eye. And again, we've got three mortars still up for Yanni. Again, lots of light artillery to hold back the Bolshevik advance. But that does not stop insanity. Well, obviously, it doesn't stop insanity, yes. Yeah. Never mind. Another recon run plane. He might want to call it in here just to be a less than friendly person. Or at least very determined to win. Mortars firing away. Panzer 4 moving in. And smoke being called in, interestingly enough. Not sure why he's doing it there. That one seems a bit more peculiar, I suppose. We are losing the sector. Though the end result is the conscripts are actually moving away. T-3045 on the move again. And more smoke here. Fascinatingly enough, perhaps to allow the Panzerlis to close in, which of course is actually a good use of smoke since that means the Panzerlis can get close without getting cut down. And of course that's always a good use, you know, to support assault troops. Smoke. Since you don't want them to die before they're actually close to the enemy. And you usually want the enemy to die, not them. But there we go, T-34 moving in. Panzerlis taking heavy losses. Panzer Shrek flying. Panzer gonna get down. Nasty amount of damage being inflicted. More smoke. And I mean, I think usually about two mortars, two to three, was in fact about what a infantry company would have had in their heavy platoons. And of course, in that sense, that's actually quite fairly accurate. Mortar half tech would like this one would have been more used for reconnaissance units. But there we go, T-34 moving in, going to likely knock it out. Pack trying to do what he can. Enemy forces are securing and of course, territory. imagine what could have happened if Insanity had himself gotten a mortar and just popped smoking with it as well. I mean, that would have been interesting. And that T-34 likely doesn't stand a chance against the Panzer IV. 
despite best intentions. Pat gets off the shot, and there we go. T-3045 cooked up. And there we go. Game over. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the Sunday Smoking Challenge. We saw again consistent, aggressive, and defensive use of smoke. Perhaps not always quite rational or always successful. Brawl, brawl. I mean, it did something. It actually confused his opponent, allowed him to attack, allowed him to defend, getting things out of there as well. So, overall, nice. I think all the mortars were a bit excessive. We might have done more better with more gunliers or more tanks or something. I mean, four mortars. I think that's over the top. Two. That's actually all right. Three. You might, you know, consider having a break. Five, you might want to consult a doctor. Of course, his opponent also did quite well, but it was all of a sudden, then he just switched to blobbing maneuvers, and that was when he lost, because then he made himself easy attacks with the mortars, and of course, Frack mentioned bombing run. Of course, we actually saw here that Mr. Yanni actually got very good usage out of his doctor. He used mortar half tech, smoke, recon run. Not the tiger, though, but again, currently needs a bit of a buff. And I've mentioned bombing run, and they're actually talking about you know, doing some work on the IS-2 and the Tiger, you know, all the heavy armor, that's likely going to see some work in the future. They're not going to be cheaper, they're not going to do that, they're just going to make them more worth the cost, I suppose. But, you know, again, quick heads up on that, as well. Overall, though, interesting match, and again, certainly rather fitting for the Sunday Smoking, smoking Sunday Challenge. Of course, I hope to perhaps do another one. And of course, other challenges in the future. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, why not subscribe? Tell your friends. If you didn't, well, why not send a replay of your own? Provide some feedback in the comments. This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.